Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. New tonight, a major development in the disappearance of Danielle Stislicki and the murder charges against Floyd Galloway. We're glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 6. Floyd Galloway is the security guard accused of her murder. We have just learned a judge's decision could have a major impact in his murder trial. Local 4 investigator Karen Drew has been leading our coverage on this case for years and joins us with this major development, Karen. Kim and Devin, this is big. We just found out items of Danielle Sizlicki's that were discovered after an alleged admission by Floyd Galloway to the person who was actually conducting his lie detector test will not be able to be used at trial. Now, this is a big win for Galloway's defense and a heartbreaking decision for Sizlicki's family. A decision has been made. A judge decides evidence discovered in the Floyd Galloway murder trial will now be suppressed. Help us bring Danielle home. Daniel Stislicki went missing back in December of 2016. The 28 year old has never been seen after leaving her Farmington Hills office. As the investigation grew, the former security guard Floyd Galloway, who worked at Danny's building, became a suspect. Galloway's attorney had the guard take a lie detector test. Come to find out, the person who gave that test, James Hoppy, was so disturbed by what Galloway told him, he shared that information with then Troy Police Chief Gary Mayer, who then shared the alleged admissions with Farmington Hills Police Chief Chuck Nebus, who was investigating a case. Nebus then dispatched his detectives to search for clues. And because of what Galloway shared to the lie detector operator, much evidence was found. In a judge's ruling, that evidence seized was a direct result of obtaining privileged information. So Danny Sizlicki's Fitbit, keys that were found in Farmington Hills, and telephone forensic data can no longer be used in trial. Also, the testimony of Galloway being spotted at a nearby Tim Hortons, surveillance video and phone records from the coffee shop, as well as evidence of a cab ride Galloway took that night from where Danny disappeared, can also not be used as evidence. The conclusion, police intentionally intruded on the privileged relationship and used the information to locate and seize evidence. Now, I did reach out to Galloway's attorney. She said Judge McMillan sent a message to law enforcement and to the attorney general that outrageous conduct in violation of defendants due process rights will not be tolerated. So a, a big win on the Galloway side, but I, I don't know the whole evidence obviously for this, but it feels like you just threw everything out of the truck that they had. So and you talk to Danny's family all the yeah. time. What do they have to Heart, say? Simply heartbroken. Yeah. I mean, very upset. They're, you know, they have to be careful in what they say because this trial is still going on. I did talk to Ann a little bit this afternoon. That's Danny's mom, and she definitely wants to be careful with her words as there's so much left to deal with in court, but issued this statement saying, our family is disappointed on these results and will continue to support the judicial appeal process and the effort for the true story to be told. The public should also be aware that Floyd is currently in prison for sexually attacking a jogger that was fortunate to escape just three months before right. Danielle right. went missing. And we covered that trial that had occurred in Livonia, September of that year. Um, he's serving a seven year sentence on that. This is going to really get very, very complicated. It's like a very consequential ruling, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. All right, Karen. A group of families suing a local Catholic school over a rule they say discriminates against students from mostly black areas. The athletes at Orchard Lake St. Mary's say they're being benched because from where they transferred. Victor Williams is live with the new claims. Victor, good evening. Yeah, guys, well, these are some very bold allegations, and some parents believe that the rule that this school is using is just not right. It's all detailed right here and this newly filed lawsuit. All they want to do is play. A Catholic school rule enforced at Orchard Lake St. Mary's is turned controversial. John Marco is the attorney filing the lawsuit on behalf of the parents of three student athletes suing the Archdiocese of Detroit and the Catholic High School League. Imagine transferring to a new school for good opportunities and then to be told you can't play sports even though you're eligible under state law, you can't play sports because you come from one of these areas. The rule in question prevents boarding school students from participating in sports if they transferred in from certain schools in Detroit or Lansing. The lawsuit claims the rule is one that discriminates against students, especially those of color. It just doesn't make any sense. 
And the, and the rule is discriminatory because it's targeting areas where the, you have larger minority populations. So it's screening out African-American kids, essentially. In a statement released by St. Mary's, the school says it's only following Michigan code and on May 9th received word from the Fair Housing Center that they had to immediately stop administering the rule because it was unlawful and discriminatory. The statement also adds the school has been working with the Catholic High School League and the Archdiocese of Detroit to find a lawful solution. Just let the kids play, you know, let the kids play and don't discriminate against these children. Now, this lawsuit was just filed yesterday, but we did get a statement from the Archdiocese of Detroit, which reads, we categorically deny the claims in the lawsuit, but will not be commenting further on pending litigation. Victor Williams, Local 4. Victor. An update now to a story we first brought you last night at 11. Two sisters are charged in a road rage case and a police chase out of Warren. Police say Letitia Higgins took off when police tried to stop her at 10 Mile and Shaner yesterday. Officers eventually got her to stop. When they arrested her, they say her sister, Bianca Harvey, attacked her sister and officers, too. Higgins is facing fleeing charges. Harvey, with resisting police, both were given personal bonds. Well, move over pork. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is giving the green light to another white meat, and that would be lab-grown chicken. But first, Dr. Frank <laughs> McGeorge is here with a new study that highlights a group of people who should definitely get a flu shot, Doc. Yeah, Kim and Evan. So according to a new study published in the journal Lancet, flu shots prevent more than the flu among heart failure patients. Research shows they also guard against pneumonia and cardiac complications. If you have heart failure, getting a flu vaccine reduced the chances of pneumonia by 40 percent, hospitalizations by 15 percent and deaths by 20 percent. Now, given how easy and inexpensive they are, this is all the more reason to get your flu shot. Now, in a major advance for the artificial or cultivated food industry, the term they actually prefer, the FDA has said that a lab-grown chicken product is safe for human consumption. According to the manufacturer, the process of culturing chicken cells is actually similar to brewing beer, but instead of growing yeast, they're growing animal cells. Now, advocates actually hope that cultured meat will reduce the need to slaughter animals for food and ultimately maybe help with the climate crisis. And not surprisingly, reviewers say it tasted like chicken. <laughs> Which is finally a compliment in this case. I mean, that's what they were aiming for, I guess. Exactly, they would. Wow. <laughs> okay, Doc. Okay, thanks, Doc. <laughs> All right, let's turn to the four. <laughs> Wild. Let's turn to the forewarned weather. Live look at Ford Field uh -huh. because the NFL is moving the Buffalo Bills Cleveland Browns game to Detroit this Sunday because Buffalo could be getting four feet of snow. That Bills Mafia, I think, would still be there in the state. They, they're not put off by that. I don't know, but uh, we aren't in for that kind of snow, but we are going to be watching. We are for meteorologist Paul Gross uh, now with an eye to the west here, Paul. Absolutely. I'm still thinking about that chicken story. I'm sorry. You get to choose between white meat right and dark meat. I mean, can you get to do that? that? Okay. Probably. All right. Now, we'll Eventually. We'll let that go. All right, here is Exact Track 40 radar. You can see we've had these little batches of you know, little batches of snow crossing the area. Let me put this in motion for you, just to show you where it's coming from. This is west to east here. So you can see we have another batch that's coming right into Livingston County here. You can see this little batch that's come through the north central part of the area. That's drifting off to the east now. So this is just transient stuff right now. The sustained snow is back west of here, where you can see where these purple counties here, and then farther west, the pink. Those are winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings for this pounding heavy snow. Just is continuously falling. Uh, speaking of falling, temps are going to fall into the upper 20s tonight. We'll have these snow showers around, and then we have to talk about what's coming up next. Well, we got the snow shower still in the forecast for tomorrow, but it's going to be very cold right into the weekend. We have more flakes in the forecast this weekend, and coming up in about 10 minutes, we'll talk about next week and temperatures coming back to normal. All of that straight ahead, guys.